Dr. Michael Burry of The Big Short became famous for making million shorting subprime mortgages during the housing and financial crisis of 2008. Now, over a decade later, he's still making millions, but this time on the opposite side of the trade. Behind me is the portfolio of Scion Asset Management, Dr. Burry's firm, and he has some very interesting long positions that I think are worth taking a look at. While Dr. Burry's portfolio strategy is certainly more active than I would say most long-term investors, there are likely still insights we can gain from his trading strategy and investment philosophy. With that said, let's take a more detailed look at the portfolio. Now, these are the holdings of Scion Asset Management as of June 30th, 2020, and we'll likely see the next reporting in mid-October, where it'll show the updated holdings as of the end of September. The 13F filing only shows long stock and option positions. And in this case, Dr. Burry has 29 individual positions within the portfolio. Overall, just from this view, it actually looks like a fairly aggressive portfolio, given that there is a significant amount of call options on specific stocks. By my count, 16 of those 29 positions are actually call option positions, and then the remainder are actual stock holdings. This pie chart shows the proportion of assets invested at the time of filing in each investment. And what really stands out here is the very large concentration in the call options on Alphabet stock. In this case, at the time of filing, 36 or over a third of the entire portfolio was invested in call options on Alphabet stock. If you combine that with also the amount invested in Facebook call options, Booking Holdings call options, and Goldman Sachs call options, those four positions alone make up over 50% of the portfolio. The largest actual stock holding at the time of filing only made up roughly 4% of the portfolio, and that was GameStop. And taking a more general look, if we group the assets between stocks and call options, Roughly 71% of the portfolio is actually in the form of options, and only a roughly 29% is actual stock holdings. Now, as I've noticed in the past with Barry's portfolio, you can often identify some investment themes. Probably the most dominant theme here would be his call options in tech stocks, specifically those large positions in Google and Facebook. Again, that call option on Alphabet stock alone being worth roughly $113 million at the time of filing at the end of June 2020. Now, when it comes to these call options, particularly these call options on tech stocks like Alphabet and Facebook, one might ask why is Burry taking such an aggressive position here? Well, interestingly, when it comes to these call options on tech stock, Burry's not the only one with that idea. In fact, later in September, it was revealed that SoftBank, the large Japanese conglomerate, had also taken very large call option positions in the mega cap tech stocks. It was later identified that these stocks were primarily in the seven largest tech stocks, including Amazon, Adobe, Alphabet, which is again, similar to Burry's position, Netflix, Salesforce, Microsoft, and Facebook. Additionally, with the rise of Robinhood and other low cost brokerage platforms, options trading is easier than ever. And we've seen a large increase in retail option trades, specifically call options, on these tech stocks. Burry, potentially seeing that large influx of retail traders, may have predicted the large rise in price in tech stocks we've seen since the crash in March. Using call options instead of just owning the stock outright is effectively a way to leverage your position and get greater potential upside if the stock price rises, though with significantly more risk. It's possible and also quite likely that Burry has hedged these call option positions so that Burry won't be at the risk of a total loss. Also, it's encouraging to see that both Alphabet and Facebook are the top two tech positions here because of the five large mega cap tech stocks, the other three being Amazon, Apple, and Microsoft. I did a valuation a little while back and also agreed that Alphabet and Facebook of the five big tech were the most attractively valued, at least in my view, which is why I own both of them within my own investment portfolio. Interestingly, Burry was also invested in both booking holdings in the form of a call option, as well as a stock position in trip.com. Both are travel and booking companies, which were hit hard during this economic recession. And perhaps at the time Burry purchased these positions, he thought that investors were being too pessimistic about future expectations. Similarly, Burry also has fairly modest positions in call options on several large banks. Now, financials are a sector that has seen significant underperformance compared to the general market during this recession. Part of this is likely due to higher loan losses and lower interest income from investments. However, with the price drop does come lower valuation levels, which Burry might potentially find attractive if interest rates were to eventually rise again in the future. And while smaller positions 
Brewery still does have some call options on gaming resorts, including Las Vegas Sands Corporation and Wynn Resorts. Now, the gaming industry was significantly hit and impacted by this recession, similar to the travel and financial industries. So when you look at these three investment themes together, this looks like to me as a bet on an economic recovery. And the method of doing that would be to look at and invest in the most impacted stocks in terms of price, which likely have the most potential upside coming out of a recession and through an economic recovery. Additionally, I think it's worth pointing out, maybe even discussing further, two of Burry's deep value stock investments. Now, these two investments in particular, as of June 2020, have been the best performing investments in his portfolio. Now, I say that based on only the change in stock price. It's possible that some of his option positions during this time may have seen a greater change in that options price over the same period. But unfortunately, we don't know the cost basis or price at which Burry initiated those option positions. A call option will only have value if the price of a stock rises above the strike price at expiration. So to understand that for a little more for Alphabet stock, we know that Burry initiated the call position at some point between April 1st and June 30th. So if he initiated the position on June 30th, the price of Alphabet stock since that time has arisen about 11%. Now, had he initiated that position at the beginning of April, Alphabet would have seen roughly a 42% increase in stock price over that period. Given that call option pricing is very sensitive to changes in price, especially as the option gets closer to expiration, it's hard to determine how much he actually gained from those options. Most likely we'll need to wait until mid-October when we see that September filing to get a better sense. But let's get back to those positions and those deep value stocks. And in particular, I wanna take a closer look at GameStop, the largest individual stock position within Burry's portfolio. Now, over this period in time, GameStop stock is up over 170%. This is the best performing investment in his portfolio over this time period. Using change in stock price as a proxy for the change in option price of his positions, Burry's return since his last filing has been roughly 19%, which has beaten the S&P 500 since again his last filing in June. If you look at how each of the individual components of his portfolio contributed to that return, the largest portfolio contributor by far was his position in GameStop, which of that 19% return, GameStop was attributable to about a third of it. Now, for many years, the short thesis on GameStop for those betting against the company and the stock has been that digital downloads and increased internet speeds will make physical disks and media obsolete and GameStop's role as a middleman will finally be over. However, there have been a series of catalysts that have shaken that short thesis and are likely what Burry was betting on when he invested heavily into the stock over the last year. One of those catalysts was an announcement by Ryan Conan, the co-founder and former CEO of the e-commerce company Chewy. Now, Chewy was acquired in 2017 by PetSmart, but Ryan has a very strong background and expertise in e-commerce retail, which many people believe could be just what GameStop needs. More recently, in October, GameStop announced that they were entering into an enterprise and commercial partnership with Microsoft. Now, with part of that arrangement, GameStop will receive a portion of the lifetime revenue for all customers brought into the Xbox ecosystem through a purchase through GameStop. Now, this partnership could potentially even grow further down the road as Microsoft has now decided that they are eliminating all of their retail stores. With no direct storefront retail presence anymore, Microsoft may see GameStop as a potential outlet in the future for selling other Microsoft products as well, not just the Xbox. Whether that fully materializes or not remains to be seen, but is again another potential catalyst down the road. But more generally, why are these catalysts having such an outsized impact on the stock price? Well, the short answer comes down to that GameStop is one of the most shorted stocks on the market. By shorting a stock, you sell it now in hopes to buy it back in the future at a lower price. The issue is, is that if the price increases, well then you'll have to buy back the stock at a higher price to cover your position for a loss. If the price continues to rise even further, more short sellers may be forced to close their positions as well and buy back the stock, further increasing the price. This is called a short squeeze and can cause a very significant increase in price in a short period of time and significant losses for short sellers. A historical example of a short squeeze would be with Volkswagen stock, which from a period from 2005 to 2009, saw its price increase by over 10 times. Now this was driven primarily by a short squeeze where many people were short the stock, but as the price continued to rise, 
short sellers were forced to buy back at a higher price to close their position. And while the stock is up over 300% from its lows, more than 100% of the outstanding shares are shorted. So there's still a lot of potential room for a short squeeze to continue further if there are additional catalysts. And as the console release cycle is beginning in this winter, continuing to stay short here is likely a very risky proposition. Michael Burry knew this setup would eventually occur. It took time for it to occur, but now that it's actually in the process, Burry has set himself up very nicely for a large payday in the future. Since June, Burry's already made 20 million from GameStop stock, and it'll be interesting to see if he has sold out any of his position further in the next filing. He reduced his position by roughly a quarter million in the three months prior to June, but if we were to see a real short squeeze coming that would bring down the short as a percentage of float, it's possible GameStop stock could see, at least in the short term, prices of upwards of any to 30, 40, even $50 per share. If Burry were to exit at the high end of that range, his net gains would be over $100 million on his single position. Now, when it comes to understanding Burry and his investment philosophy, I think his quote from his 2001 shareholder letter really sums this up nicely. He says, as much as the fund is a value fund, it's an opportunistic fund. And as much as I enthusiastically explore the value of each business behind every stock, I seek the pockets of the market that are the most inefficient, the most temporarily imbalanced in terms of price. Whatever extra return this fund will earn will be born of buying absurdly cheap rather than selling dearly smitten. I certainly have no proven ability to pick tops, and I do not anticipate attempting such a feat in the future. Rather, fully aware that wonderful businesses make wonderful investments only at wonderful prices, I will continue to seek out the bargains amid the refuse. Dr. Michael Burry has been known to be a contrarian investor when looking for those pockets of value amid the refuse, and I see his current portfolio as no deviation from that philosophy. Betting on an economic recovery through financials, travel, and gaming stocks is certainly against the grain. Additionally, many were very skeptical of his investments in deep value stocks like GameStop and Bed Bath & Beyond, but those two have turned out to work quite well in his favor. However, investing in deep value won't always work out as there are some value traps out there. Taylor Brands was one of them that Michael Burry invested in, which unfortunately for him did not pan out. Overall, with such a concentrated portfolio in options, and his GameStop position now tripled in size, I'm curious what adjustments Michael Burry has made over these last three months, from the end of June to the end of September, which will be revealed to us soon. If I were to speculate, given the run-up we've seen in tech stocks, particularly for Facebook and Google, I would expect that the position on those call options would likely to be trimmed down some. Maybe I'm wrong here, but that would be my guess. In addition, for GameStop shareholders, it would be an encouraging sign if Burry were to maintain his full GameStop position and not sell any shares through the quarter. Maintaining his position of almost 3 million shares of GameStop would signal to the market that he's convinced that the price of GameStop shares are worth more. Now, whether that's in the potential long run or in the short run caused by a short squeeze, I'm not 100% sure. On the other hand, if he were to sell out or reduce his position, it would signal that he believes that the short squeeze has run its course and any further catalysts are unlikely to change the long-term thesis for GameStop. However, given his history with the stock and his activist letters in the past, I think it's unlikely he will to completely move out of his position prior to the console cycle, which is coming up this winter. So hopefully you enjoy this portfolio review as much as I did. For me, it's fun to see other investors' portfolios to sort of pick their mind and see how they're thinking about different types of investments and going about their investment strategy. Do you agree or disagree with any of Burry's holdings? And what changes do you think he'll be making next quarter? Until next time, thank you so much for watching. My name is Michael, and I will see you in the next video.